Beneath us is a maze of 80 square miles of man-made caverns where 5,000 men once labored. We're in Bon Terre, Missouri, where after the Civil War, construction began below us on the largest lead mine in the entire world. What makes this underground journey unique is that after the mine closed in 1960, the vast network of caverns flooded to create a huge underground lake. Got your pickaxe ready? I think I might need my snorkel. Well, let's get the lead out. We begin our trek into the subterranean unknown through the mule entrance. This same descent is once a one-way trip for the hard-working animals because the mine is built with stables down below. Let's just hope we have a return trip in our future. It's kind of creepy down here. It's like you never know who's going to be around the next bend. <laughs> Hey. hey you must We've be arranged to meet Doug Jurgens, nice who now owns and operates the mine as a diving destination. <laughs> this is quite a uh, He's promised to show us a side to Missouri few here. people have ever seen. I mean, we've been to some other holes in the ground, but nothing as large as this. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful and kind of creepy. Well, you can remove those hats now oh, and I can okay. you're going to need these lights. You sure we're not going to get wet? No. Oh, no rocks are going to drop on our head? No. I know from that little mule entrance, it looks like there's really not going to be much here, but this is just, how big is this place? We have over 17 miles of navigable shoreline. What you're going to see is the tip of the iceberg here. Okay, well, let's get okay. to it. You bet we're going to make you guys deep earth explorers. <laughs> what is once solid rock is now divided into 1,500 stadium-sized rooms, some dry and some submerged. The constant 58 degree water is as deep as 100 feet in some areas. And regardless of the weather above ground, the air in the mine is a steady 62 degrees. All of this was mined out. None of this is natural caves and caverns. This was all mined. All mined by pickaxe, shovel, and dynamite. They must have pulled a lot of lead out of this place. Bon Terre, which is French for good earth, is in the heart of the world's largest lead belt. By the late 19th century, during the Second Industrial Revolution, the mine is cranking out ton after ton of lead. And generations of blue-collar workers spend 12-hour shifts laboring deep below the ground. Why was it so important to mine it all out of here? Well, they used lead for glass, paint, of course, bullets. Oh my God. Yeah, of course. I mean, how, how could we, we forget bullets? The bullets are used in the Spanish-American and World Wars. And over the years, the lead is also added to car batteries, window glass, and fine paint. Supply is abundant. Demand for the versatile metal soars and the Bon Terre mine flourishes. With so much activity underground, a fully operating subterranean city within the mine takes shape. It becomes the heart of the lead mining operation. The city is an area that was developed by the mining company underground, which had offices, laboratories, repair shops, uh, wow. everything that it took to sustain the operation underground without having to hoist people up and down. So you mean like uh, punch clocks, uh, tables, chairs, refrigerators, everything? No, well, but they didn't have refrigeration <laughs> down here. For, but uh, there were Maybe office, that, everything but that. <laughs> office buildings, uh, wow. steps going into, into vastness. Did you ever check that time clock to make sure that everybody punched out? <laughs> By the second half of the 1900s, scientists begin to publicize the dangers of lead products. The changes in consumer use caused the demand for the metal to dwindle. And in 1960, it's the end of the line for these hard-working miners. The Bon Terre mine stops production and its underground city shuts down. The water pumps are turned off, Mother Nature takes over, and groundwater seeps through the layers of rock. The result is a subterranean billion-gallon diving hole, with the remnants of the mine practically frozen in time. Who would have thought in a landlocked state like Missouri you could actually come here and see all this stuff underwater? If I was a diver, if I If you were a diver, you get seasick in the bathtub. The layers of limestone between the ground and the lake filter out the lead, and the crystal clear water makes it easy for us to see just below the surface. The Bon Terre Mine. But the abandoned underwater city deep within the mine remains out of sight. And with the water nearly 300 feet deep in some places, it's not exactly reachable with our snorkels. 
Takes an experienced diver to dive Bonterre, doesn't it, Doug? Oh, absolutely. You know what I think we need for this shoot, Mark? What? A weird U.S. dive team. Yeah. Dive team? But wonder if the miners whistled while they worked. How are the acoustics in here, Doug? Excellent. This place rocks. Would you sing us a song to illustrate your point? In a cavern, in a cavern, excavating for a mine. Laboring in the mine isn't all fun and games. The miners spend their long shifts in cramped spaces with dangerous falling rock and crevices surrounding them. The area within the mine called the city is even equipped with cafeterias and sleeping quarters to eliminate the need to go above ground during shifts. And from our boat we can see some of what remains. We come to an old elevator shaft that stretches up through the water. During Bonterre's heyday, the elevator is essential for carrying workers through the five-story mine. That goes down about a about 100 feet from, from where we're at right now, and uh, you, you end up at a door, steel trap door, and then from there you go into the city. This may be as far as we can go in our cave craft, but at the other end of this elevator shaft, our dive team is exploring what remains of the underwater city. We decide to head back to the dock to await their arrival. Dan Kroll, our underwater cameraman, is the first one out of the water. Hey, Dan. What did you see down there, man? Well, very large caverns, tunnels. You see these pillars you're looking at out here? Mm -hmm. They're even bigger down there. Uh, you, well, can, you can actually, <laughs> as you're swimming around, you can kind of, you know, you kind of hear the tink, 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 you know, and the working. <laughs> We take a look at the dive team's underwater footage of the city deep within the Bonterre mine. It's surprising how well preserved it looks. The divers pass through the timekeeper's shack, where miners once clocked in and out for their 12-hour shifts. That's in pretty good shape. Actually. Ladders, stairwells, and rail tracks that are once full of activity and foot traffic now lead to nowhere. Great columns extend five stories from the top of the mine to the very bottom. And the endless rooms are connected by a series of mine shafts and tunnels. What was that? We call it smoke. It's just the oxidation yeah. that's coming off of all the iron. Mm -hmm. In some wrecks, if they're in real still water, that's about the only time you'll ever see that. Looks like the alien ship's coming into the uh, devastated city, doesn't it? <laughs> Our experienced divers go through dangerous mine shafts that are usually off limits to visitors. The labyrinth of passageways that are deep below rock and water takes them through the city, where they explore repair shops and workstations. Even a locomotive that once carried miners through the 1500 rooms remains turned on its side, as if it's waiting for another trip through this now underwater ghost city. Actually, it is kind of an eerie as you go along, and then you, it's like here, you go out here and you look in the water, it's just, it's an abyss, you know, you don't know how deep it is, mm -hmm. but uh, it was pretty cool looking. Beautiful. Abandoned mines may be a dime a dozen, but where else have generations of hard-working miners been replaced by curious scuba divers? The thousands of men who struggled to make a living laboring below the ground have left behind an underwater time capsule for future generations to explore. With its rusty relics now submerged in water, Bonterre's vast